Hey folks, it's John P with GeekBeat, and this is the one where I go to prison. So we're inside the walls of Eastern State. This is really the world's first major penitentiary where people came here to go to prison not just to be punished but they, the theory was that they were going to be penitent, they were going to learn something, reflect upon their crimes and uh, you know come out better people on the other end. You'll notice these walls beside me 30 feet high above ground they go another 10 feet below ground. They're eight feet wide at the base. You can't walk across the top. It's not like there's a walking path there. So we have the big main building that we just kind of walk through to get in here where the warden would stay and guards might be and things like that. And then at the corners, at the edges of this facility, there were these things that kind of look like guard towers but they're not exactly guard towers. When the place was originally constructed, they were more just facades. It was supposed to look really big and intimidating and mean from the outside to make people not want to come in here. But as you'll see when we get inside, there was really no need to guard these walls because these people weren't going anywhere. Come on, let's go take a look at the cells. So when the prison was originally constructed, there were seven different cell blocks we're actually heading into cell block number two. So we're gonna take a look and see what the conditions were like. When the, when the facility was originally built, it was the nicest prison basically ever built anywhere. Now, as we look down this big hall, you're gonna see that the, there are cells on either side, but you're also gonna notice there's skylights up in the top, not only throughout the corridor here, but each individual cell has its own skylight as well. This was to make sure that everything felt bright and airy uh, so that people could, again, be penitent. This was the first major building anywhere that had a sewage system. This helped out so that the inmates didn't have to, let's say, have a bucket that someone would come and pick up, etc. It also cut down on diseases because they were able to use the toilet and it would eliminate the waste and, uh, you know, keep people healthy. They weren't just worried about the prisoners' health, they were also worried about the guards' health, the warden's health, and then someone would get out or they'd go to court and the, the judges and juries would get sick. I mean, this was, sanitation was a big deal. The toilets in here only flushed once a week. Compared to an outhouse, that was still quite often. So by today's standards, it wouldn't be that great. But by the standards of the 1800s, it was amazing. All of these walls, were actually made of a horsehair plaster. And you can see some of that hair in the walls. They're crumbling now uh, because this facility was in use for 142 years. But by the 1970s, it shut down and it just went into a complete state of disrepair for decades. No one came in here and everything just crumbled. So we see all the peeling paint and all that other stuff. But during its time when it was operational as a prison, there were actually quite a few famous inmates here. Let's go take a look at one of them. So in 140 years of operation, as you can imagine, there were a lot of prisoners coming through here, some of whom must have been very famous, not the least of which, Al Capone. This was his cell. He had it decked out a little nicer than the other inmates who came through, probably through intimidation or bribery. God knows why. But the, the prison was originally built to hold about 250 prisoners before it was ever even completed. They decided that wasn't that was not enough, so they increased it to about 450 cells, which would have been 450 prisoners. Then they started overcrowding it. Eventually, the prison population got up to around 1,800 people, 
and then kind of peaked there before it all went to ruin the way you see it here. This is a great mock-up of the prison layout. I love this one because it lets us see an aerial view of the original design. This is not how it sits today, but the original intent was to have a central kind of uh, point, guard point, let's say, with these different buildings that branch off from the middle. Um, it's a very large complex. You can tell even just from the size of the design here. It takes uh, the walled area is about 10 acres. And those giant walls that we showed you and talked about earlier, there's a half a mile if you walk around the entire outside of the perimeter. So it's a very, very big facility. It's pretty cool the, the uh, way that it was designed to have this one central location, like a star where everything comes from the center outward. And a lot of facilities are designed like that today, not just prisons, but even things like nursing homes and hospitals. Let me show you why. So this is the center of the guard tower. And if I step right in the middle here, the nice thing is all of the hallways radiate out from this point. So one person can stand here and keep an eye on all the 250 or 450 cells as the case may be. It's very efficient design, lets you have fewer guards, save money, save time, get places quickly, deal with problems. You know, it's pretty smart. I'm standing here at the entrance to cell block seven, which is one of the last cell blocks to be built. And you remember how I was saying that the prison was originally laid out for 250 rooms? Well, after they built the first three cell blocks, they were filling them up so fast, they decided to change the design and they moved to two-story construction. So as you can see, now we've doubled up on the number of inmates that we can house in this facility. Okay, if you thought being in the prison was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet because now we're gonna check out the punishment cells. You know when you watch a movie and somebody's being bad and they say, let's toss them in the hole? Well, this is basically the hole. They called it Klondike. Come on, Norm, watch your step and turn on your light. We're actually going down below the prison You'll see there is not very much headroom. Um, in fact, if you're me, you cannot stand up. There are a lot of pipes down here, which is interesting because uh, you come down here looking for cell blocks and you think, well, where are the cells? All I see are these pipes. The pipes are for the sewage and the heating and stuff. But you come in this way a little bit and you get into the actual cells. So the inmates who committed some kind of a, you know, serious infraction would be brought down here and tossed in this little room. Give me a little light here, Norm. They have to come down through this hole and this is their new home. It's basically just a little below where I can stand up. This is it. They turn off the lights and they leave you here in the dark. I'm not going to lie, just stepping in there kind of gave me the creeps. It is definitely not a place you'd want to be light or dark. In fact, it was so bad because it has no running water, no sewage. They just toss you in there for a month. Ugh, just think about it. Ultimately, they decided this was inhumane and they, deceased, they desisted with the use of this particular area and just shut it down. Now they're storing the toilets in there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed your virtual trip to the prison. Not that any prison would be a particularly enjoyable experience, but this one for its time was the best you could do. So if you enjoyed the video, head on over to youtube.com forward slash geekbeat TV, give us a thumbs up. I'm going to get out of here before they decide they're not going to let me out anymore. See you guys.